Harrock had been dead several minutes, almost twenty by Narek's reckoning. He was lying on his side, one arm flung out, still clutching his ritual knife, the other pinned beneath the dead weight of his body. His partially helmeted head lay askew. It had almost been forcibly removed. He had received two fatal wounds. The first, a bolt round through the neck, had ripped open Harrock's jugular and exposed his carotid artery. It had also removed a portion of his lower jaw and vox grill with it, but had not killed him immediately. The second to the torso had caved in most of his chest and destroyed 80% of his internal organs when the mass-reactive shell had exploded on impact. From this, Haruk had died instantly. Narek had found the wreckage of the body on the upper floor of a warehouse, slowly growing cold in a pool of blood. Kneeling down by his dead brother, he felt no grief for Haruk. The word-bearer was a true bastard amongst bastards, who liked to make sport of his prey. His predilection had been his undoing this time. Kill quietly, kill quickly. This was Narek's way. A toy was a thing to be played with, and toys were best left to children. An enemy was not a toy, he was a threat to your life until his was ended. But Haruk was a sadist. So many of Narek's kin were turning this way. A change had come upon them, and it was not just manifest in the vestigial horns that were more than mere affectation for a war helm, it was soul-deep and irreversible. This did not sit well with Narek, for he had once believed that the Emperor was a god and served this deity with a true zealot's fervour. When the Legion erected the cathedrals on Monarchia, he had wept. It was beautiful, glorious. All of that was gone now, and an older pantheon had resurfaced to usurp the supposed pretender. So, the sight of his slain brother did not hurt him. But, as Haruk was of the word, Narek would perform the rites over the corpse as required. Swathed in darkness, he muttered the necessary incantations that would put Haruk's soul in service to the Pantheon. Now he would become the sport, a plaything of the Neverborn. Narek almost felt them in his veins, pulsing beneath his skin and in the staccato beating of his twin hearts. They clung to this place, and their grip was ever tightening as Lorga wrote his song of murder. Elias had spoken of it one night when the sky seemed blacker than pitch, and the two of them had shared a drink between comrades, if not friends. This was the Premarker's symphony, and it had unleashed a ruin storm of such terrible intensity that the very galaxy was cleft in twain by it. Lifting his hand from Harrick's corpse, Narek concluded the rites, but felt the hunger of what dwelled in unreality, pressing against the gossamer thin veil of the mortal realm. A barrier can only stretch so much, and this one was near to splitting. Soon two worlds would meet, soon the galaxy would indeed burn, and here Narek has secured the Athame and returned it to the Erebus acolyte, Elias, who ordered him to find it. Are you intending to harness it then? Narek asked, choosing to leave his suspicions unspoken. Elias regarded him sternly again. You are over-curious, Narek. His eyes narrowed. Is something amiss? I, Narek began, it is divine, this thing. He gestured to the spear, eyes drawn to its fulgurant glow, which even now threw back the shadows inside the tent. Does it not make you— Elias had not lowered his gaze and listened intently to his huntsman. Make me what, Narek? Question. He barely whispered it for fear that to speak it aloud was part of some blasphemy. You have doubts? I am merely seeing what is in front of my eyes. Here in your hands lies a piece of the Emperor's will. It is lightning, cast from his fingertips, and forged into a weapon. Elias was nodding. Indeed it is a weapon, one I mean to wield. I see now that was Lord Erebus's plan for us all along. When we raised those cathedrals to his honour and glory, all the years we spent extolling his holy church and divine right to rule mankind, did you think we served the needs of a false prophet? Narek asked. I am talking about faith, Elias. He has denied it, denied our worship and faith. He spits on us, and in so doing are the true gods of the universe revealed unto us. And your words border dangerously close to sedition, not revelation. The revelation is before us, brother, the Gal Vorbach. They are men no longer. They ascend. No. 
they merely harbour sustenance for the monsters dwelling within and wearing their flesh. I would welcome such a union to be so blessed. This here, he brandished the spear like he was considering stabbing it into Narek's heart, is my path to that glory. I see only damnation, but I am bound to it, as are you. And don't threaten me with sedition. Your words smack more thickly of betrayal than mine.